enjoyed a magical new year as he celebrated 20 years of Harry Potter. But now Jason Isaacs is heading in a very different direction as he stars in a heartbreaking new drama, Mass, which tells the story of a couple experiencing unthinkable grief. Wow, and uh, Jason joins oh. us now. Morning. Morning. Good morning, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you, good, Jason. Thank Let me see. You. Um, I watched uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, and, and it's what's really great with something like this is I had no clue what it was about, what the film was. So I went in totally cold and, and blind on this one. And it unfolded in front of me. I thought, what the hell? It's, this is so personal and, like, viciously emotional. Uh, what an incredible thing for four people to go through. So, for you, I would have thought, that's yeah. like nothing you've ever done before. It is. I mean, it's an odd thing to say because it's uh, physically, budget-wise, it's the smallest, one of the smallest things I've ever done. But it feels like, in some ways, this is very pretentious. So, you know, uh, I'm worried. It feels like the biggest film I've ever made, emotionally, the landscape of it. Um, you know, I'll take on to the introduction, saying it's heartbreaking. For me, it's incredibly heartening. I mean, the film, you know, is about hope. It's about forgiveness. It's about healing. Uh, um, I, I felt, I don't know about you, but at the end, when I first saw it, I felt drained, but in a way that I felt, you know, smelt the flowers. I felt the kind of possibility yeah. of growth and, and uh, human contact. And mm -hmm. forgiveness. I mean, uh, the, the, yeah, forgiveness, there is absolutely. that. That's certainly where you get to, but the, but the start, we, we sort of explain um, the, 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 the concept of, of the film, that you have these four people, um, your character, Jay, uh, Martha Plimpton, who's, who's Gail, and Dowd, who's amazing, and Linda, uh, Reed Burney, who's Richard. So they're, they're two different couples. Mm -hmm. uh, one couple have a son who has been killed, uh, you guys, um, in, a, in, a, in a mass shooting in a school, and the others are the parents uh, who are there uh, to the try and discuss to, to fit, why did this happen, how did this happen, and what was the story behind well, it? Well, actually, I, that's some of the stuff that happens, but actually they're not there. They're there very specifically because a therapist has sent them there to move forward. Like, mm. It's not really about let's go over the events of the past. Um, and to me, I hope this doesn't sound disrespectful to people who've been in that terrible situation, but it's not really about the thing that happened in the past. It could have been a car crash. It could have been uh, any kind of incident. It's about any of us who wake up with our heart full of uh, anger or resentment or blame and uh, and ruin our lives because of stuff between our ears. Yeah. I mean, shed the bag past. Uh, so it's not really the incident that spurred it, because that's years ago. It's their marriage. I mean, it's as much about marriage as anything else and people who aren't seeing each other or talking to each other. And, and um, you know, I could, I, for me, at least personally, I can get up and have a terrible day or have a great day and the world is exactly the same. It's to do with whether I'm carrying blame, whether I'm kind of poisoning myself with, uh, with my feelings about things outside my control. Yeah. And, uh, and so it's, for me, the film's about that. Now, as you said, this was a, a completely different role for you and, the, you know, emotionally the biggest thing that you've ever done. How do you prepare yourself for such an emotional role? Uh... In, in some ways, you don't. You have to trust that, uh, you know, I've been acting long enough that my job is actually to clear the slate, to make myself blank. And all the work that we did as actors, the four of us, uh, was to build what had happened outside the room and then just shoot the scenes, not not uh, plan them, and let them unfold. So if we, Martha and I, who play a husband and wife whose marriage is really in a terrible state, we had to work out what did the therapist therapist tell us, uh, what are we meant to say, what are we not meant to say in the room, and what are we arguing about? When do we stop sharing a bedroom? Uh, who drinks too much? How many days a week do I spend away? And then just let the scenes unfold without planning them. And because they, they're, they're long, long takes, the whole film, uh, much of it is one single conversation that takes many, many turns. And, uh, but it references things that happen between us, and things that happened over the years, or lawsuits. Or, and we needed to build those things so that we had a shared memory and then trust to the brilliant script and director. And for me, trust to these extraordinary actors I was in the room with and not plan anything. So, so, that just do all so incredible. So that, that, that's... Their bag of tricks. I, you know, I, we left our bag of tricks at the front door. Yeah, mm. I mean, that was one of the things that I, I... When you're watching, thinking, how much of this is closely scripted? Obviously, you have a, 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 an idea of where it has to go, essentially where it has to go. Uh, but was it... Is it completely scripted? It is. I mean, I'd like to take credit for me being able to improvise that level of kind of 
uh, emotional articulacy and lyrical genius, but no, it all, it's all down to the writer. Uh, we wow. have to make it feel like you're making it up on the day. And you certainly don't know whether someone's going to be crying, laughing, stony face, whether there'll be a long, long silence or, um, uh, you know, it really, I mean, in a way the film feels as an audience, I've now seen it with audiences a few times in different places of the world. Uh, you feel like you're almost an invasion of privacy. It feels like you're at the table with these people and maybe you don't belong in the room. It's so intimate, the film. Oh, and massively um, awkward. Yeah, and, it made oh, me feel awkward a number of times of sitting there thinking that I was part of something I shouldn't actually be watching. But let me ask you something, honestly. Let's forget the fact that there's a few people watching. <laughs> Did you feel by then, because I, I worry, because I've you know, done lots of publicity, but I think it's a beautiful film uh, and people should see it. Uh, but I'm inside the bubble. And when I hear you say words like, uh, you know, it's, or I hear other people say it's traumatic or it's harrowing, I honestly feel like I felt something divine by the end. I felt something really uplifting. But maybe that's just me. Did you? Did no, you no, no. That? I think so, I think all of the all of the things that. that you've said, I got to at the end. Um, in the lead up to, I'm thinking about it as a parent and thinking, what would I do if my child had been a killed in a mass shooting or been been the shooter, yeah. uh, and so I'm running through that, looking at Anne Dowd's crushed face as, as she's explaining or trying to explain the, the relationship between her and her husband, which obviously, you know, much like uh, you and uh, and Gail's not working either. So it was that sort of thing. It has, it, it, uh, you get to the extraordinary and beautiful ending, which is where I wanted it to be, and where I needed it to be. But leading up to that, I'm seeing it, I, I was seeing it as a, as a parent thinking, oh my God, what if I ended up, because there are these, you know, sort of these prison rooms, victim rooms where people do do that. They meet the, the, the person yeah. who's committed a crime based against. On, um, yeah, it's very much based on restorative justice meetings where people go into prisons and either meet the person who did something to them or who did something similar to someone else. Also is inspired a lot by the South African Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Uh, the writer was obsessed by that music college. And it's, you know, uh, it's, it's really, he was obsessed with the, power of forgiveness. Did he have the potential to forgive? But oddly for me, and I don't mean to trivialize it, it really made me think about marriage a lot, my marriage a lot. Yeah. And, wow. and uh, even with Martha, when we'd sit up at night and try and agree on the roadmap that the two of them had planned, you know, the kind of rules, what trigger words they were and weren't allowed to say in the room. And we couldn't agree on those things. This reminded me of how many times with my wife, uh, I go, well, you said this. She goes, I absolutely did not say that. And I <laughs> wish that I had. CCTV footage of us in the kitchen, so I could prove or maybe lose the argument. Um, it's so much about being, it's so much about human contact, which is why, oddly, you know, this is coming out like a lot of films do nowadays in the cinema, and also you can get it at home uh, on television. And uh, if you're triple backed, as I hope everybody is, uh, I would urge you to see it with other people because it's really a plea for human contact. Uh, I, I I can easily spend my day. I'm away filming a lot. I'm away from Britain a lot, but I. When I read the news, I'm incensed, I'm angry. I'm angry at lots of people about lots of things. And I can carry that anger. I'm thousands of miles away making a television program. I'm not making any difference to the world or people I'm angry at. And this really, in many ways, is a plea for seeing other people as human, not, not allowing ourselves to become so polarised, so divided by those people we think we, whether it's Brexiteers or anti-vaxxers or whatever it is that gets your particular goat, uh, about making contact and seeing people as fully rounded human beings. Yeah, uh, well, I definitely, uh, you're not wrong. Definitely, it's the most I've analysed the film on the telly in quite some time, so <laughs> that was, uh, but it is well worth it. I mean, it is a, it is an extraordinary film. It's like probably like something, nothing yeah. you've really seen before. It's in cinemas are, um, now, uh, from tomorrow, tomorrow, and it's on Sky Cinema tomorrow. And just, uh, just say uh, thanks, Rochelle and Philip, um, because we've gone through the entire interview, and what haven't we mentioned? Uh, the thing, the boy with the annoying thing. Who we, just did well. we did very well. We did very well. There you go. You're welcome. <laughs> well, 20 years ago, believe it or not, 20 years ago today, Black Hawk Down came out, which you haven't mentioned. Wow, and, there you uh, go. <laughs> talk about a different film. There you go. There you go. Uh, it's lovely thank to talk you to you, much. as always. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much. Right. Hello, all my family in England. I miss you and I love you. Oh. When are you back? Uh, well, you know, the show has already been delayed a few times as people get the lurgy. So hopefully yeah. the end of March, but uh, let's oh, well, let's so. crossed for it's, you. Uh, it's good Sammy's doing at the moment is uh, the the uh, surgical drama. So uh, actually, but, but you all I'm to off get... to do a heart bypass yeah, today. Go, go and do your yeah. bypass. Go and do your bypass. See you later. See you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thanks bye -bye. a lot. Bye. See ya.